Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're about to take a deep dive into one of the biggest true crime cases in the universe, or at least on our part of the planet. From the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. All right, so we've got a uh, quite the deep dive for you today, folks. The Sean Diddy Combs case, it's, well, it's a lot more than just your typical celebrity scandal. You sent over a whole bunch of articles on this, and we're talking about some serious accusations here. Sex trafficking, racketeering, secret tape. It's like mm-hmm. something you'd see in a movie, but this is this is the real deal. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting to me is how the prosecution is approaching this whole thing. They're using ICO statutes, which is, yep. you usually see that with organized crime, like taking down the mob. Yeah. Not usually something you see in a case like this. So are they saying Diddy was basically running things like a mob boss? That's kind of the picture they're painting. You're trying to show that Diddy's entire enterprise was like this organized operation with this this ingrained culture of silence and deference right. that allowed all this alleged criminal activity to go unchecked for what they're saying is over a decade. A culture of silence and deference? What does that even mean in this context? Well, think of it like this. Yeah. It's, it's this unspoken agreement to look the other way. Hmm. Even if you see something wrong, You don't say anything because you're afraid to lose your position. You're afraid to lose your career. Or maybe you're even afraid of what might happen if you do speak up. And it sounds like they're drawing some pretty serious comparisons here, too. Like comparing some people in Diddy's circle to Ghislaine Maxwell, that's that's a heavy comparison to make. It really is. And it just goes to show how seriously they're taking these allegations. This case is it's about more than just one person's alleged actions. It's about a system that might have been protecting and enabling those actions, which brings us to that hotel security video. Oh, yeah. The one that allegedly shows Diddy assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. That seems to be a big part of the prosecution's case. Right. They're saying this wasn't just a one time thing, but part of a pattern. And they're not just relying on that one video either. There's talk of more tapes. Potentially even more damning stuff. Yeah, I read about that. One lawyer even mentioned a potential video with someone more high profile than Diddy himself. Honestly, that's the part that really caught my eye. Sure, it's a bombshell detail. But what I find even more significant is that a new accuser has come forward, alleging that Combs assaulted her back in 2018. Now, if her allegations are true, it really gives weight to this idea of a pattern of behavior. It's not just about one relationship gone wrong. And this whole thing with the freak offs, that's a whole other layer to this case. Right. It makes you question what the line even is between a party and something much darker. Yeah. It's like they're arguing that Diddy's success wasn't just built on talent and hard work, but on this foundation of exploitation and silence. And you know what really gets me is Mark Cuban's comment about being glad he didn't hang out with Diddy. I mean, that's just one guy's perspective, but still. It makes you wonder what other people in the industry knew and chose to ignore. It's like pulling on a loose thread. (laughs) You start tugging and the whole thing could unravel. And that's where these freak offs come in, right? These parties, they're making it sound like these weren't just like, you know, regular parties. Yeah, the prosecution is really trying to push this narrative that these freak offs were more calculated, like they were part of a strategy to control these women. So they're saying that Diddy used these parties to take advantage of these women. Essentially. And because of his wealth and his status, Mm. the power dynamics were so skewed, it would have been incredibly difficult for anyone to speak out against it. It makes you think about everyone involved, right? Not just the women, but the people around Diddy, his employees, his inner circle. Were they all in on it or were they trapped too? That's the million dollar question. Mm. And honestly, it's something that might come out during the trial itself. Were these people willing participants Mm. or were they pressured, intimidated, maybe even threatened into keeping quiet. It's like there was no winning in that situation. Be on the inside and risk getting caught up in it. Or speak out and risk what your career, your reputation, Mm -hmm. maybe even your safety. Exactly. And that brings us back to this whole RICO angle. Using a statute that's designed to take down organized crime to address what's going on in the entertainment industry. That's a pretty bold move, if you ask me. It's like they're sending a message, like the old rules don't apply anymore. Even someone as powerful and as connected as Diddy, he can still be held accountable. Right. It could set a precedent, not just for the music industry, but for any industry where power dynamics like this exist. It's 
It's a lot to process. On the one hand, you have this empire that Diddy built, music, branding, you name it. And on the other hand, you have these really serious allegations and the potential for justice for these women. If what they're saying is true. It really makes you think, will this be what takes Diddy down? Or will he weather this storm too? I guess only time will tell. He's maintained his innocence from the start and his legal team seems more than ready to fight this. It's going to be... Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out, that's for sure. It's like it's like watching one of those slow-motion earthquakes. You know, it's coming, you can see the cracks forming, but you don't know how bad the damage is going to be until it actually hits. That's a, that's a pretty good way to put it. And, you know, the aftershocks of this whole thing, mm -hmm. they could reach far beyond Diddy and his inner circle. Especially the music industry. They're all about image, right? Exactly. This case could really force them to take a long, hard look in the mirror push for more transparency, more accountability from the top down. And you can't talk about this without thinking about the hashtag MeToo movement. It's like a continuation of that conversation, isn't it? It really is. Like society is saying, OK, we see you. We're not going to sweep this under the rug anymore. Yeah. People are demanding change and they're demanding it now. This whole thing has just been it's been eye opening, you know, seeing how power influence silence. Yeah. How it all plays into these situations. And it really makes you wonder. Where do we go from here? What responsibility do we have as consumers, yeah. as fans? Right. Do we just keep supporting an industry that allows this kind of behavior to happen? Or do we demand better? That's the question, isn't it? And it goes way beyond Diddy. This is a societal issue. This case just brings it to light. We'll have to see how it all plays out. It's a lot to unpack, but it's definitely given us all something to think about. Well, Absolutely. Well, folks, sounds like we've reached the end of our deep dive for today. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point of narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? for so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski